and councillors, uh, a safety issue, if we have any accidents or fires, can leave by that door or that door, not this one, because this will go you nowhere. Okay? And we meet at the mine building. Okay? Can you all switch off your phones or turn down silent? And can we not talk unless we're speaking? Thank you. At the meeting tonight, we are here to discuss the Borough Council of Kingsland and West Norfolk Standards Hearings Decision Notice, dated the 3rd of November 2022. The monitoring officer has advised the acting town clerk that the recommendation 4C that the Down and Market Town Council resolves to remove Council Lawson as Deputy Mayor is to be withdrawn on the basis that it would be contravene Section 157 of the Local Government Act 1972 and therefore would be ultra-virus <coughs> to impose. The monitoring officer upon advising us of this is also recommending changes to the Borough Council guidance note on sanctions to reflect this position. Tonight we will therefore consider 4A, 4B and 4D. These will be read out when we reach agenda item 5. Councillors, may I remind you of the key rule of debate at this meeting tonight. Standing order 1-0. Unless permitted by the chair of the meeting, a councillor must speak once in a debate on a motion except for standing order. 104 to give personal explanation or 105 to exercise a right of reply. Please do not expect to speak more than once at this meeting unless standing orders permit this action with my permission. Standing order 1P. During the debate on the motion, a councillor may interrupt only on a point of order or a personal explanation and the councillor interrupting shall stop speaking. A councillor raising a point of order shall identify the standing orders which he, she or she they consider has been breached or a specific other irregular in proceedings. The meeting he or she they is concerned by. <coughs> standing order 1Q, a point of order, if order a point if order shall be decided by the chair of the meeting and the decision is final. Standing order 1T. The contribution or speeches by councillors shall relate only to the motion under discussion and shall not exceed their five minutes without the consent of the chair of the meeting. I will now address the members of the public. Standing order 3F relates to the meeting generally. The period of time designated for public participation at the meeting in accordance with Standing Order 3E, which gives you the right to make a representation, entitles you to speak for no more than 15 minutes in total, and Standing Order 3G allows any individual to speak for no more than three minutes. And this will be observed. Thank you. To receive members' apologies for absence. We have apologies from Councillor Marseille who's at work, Councillor Pegg who's got standing family commitments and Councillor D Pennington for family commitments and Councillor T Pennington for family commitments. Mm -hmm. Councillors, do you accept those apologies? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Item 2, decorations, members declaration of interest. Any member with a disposable pecuniary interest should declare now and it is recommended that anyone who does not believe that they can act in a fair, objective or open manner declare an interest. We'd love to declare an interest. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We now go to public participation. Number one, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Members, tonight you have been placed in the embarrassing position of discussing a standards case against the serving member. Researching back, this council has never been put in such an awful position by the actions of one member. Doug Lawson has waged a campaign of war against former members, the former Clark, and members of the public 
It has been proved and recorded by an independent panel and then confirmed by the Sands panel. A campaign of war, their concluding words on record. Professional people who did not know him and probably hadn't even heard of Down and Market cannot be challenged by an unprofessional person because it suits his agenda. There is no different to someone charged in court arguing with the solicitors and the judge. Doug Lawson has behaved disrespectfully. In fact, his behaviour was described as woeful, undermining local democracy, and it has shamed this council and all its members. We all know the saying, mud sticks, and all members here are part of the collateral damage until they do the decent thing, and Doug Lawson is sanctioned tonight with immediate effect. There can be no doubt the action this council should take. Uphold the recommendations and sanctions of the Borough Standards Panel, regardless of his continued missives of illegal and unlawful. He's not above the law, the Government Localism Act, or the Code of Conduct. I would appeal to members' sense of respect and duty to this town and the general public, which does not apply to Doug. He has no respect for anyone. We've all read that on Facebook. Any member who supports him must realise they will be seen by the public to be no better than him, and if he remains on this council, perhaps you might want to consider the consequences of disagreeing with him in the future. You've all witnessed his campaign mode of guerrilla warfare, his words in the Lynn News, not mine, which could well be directed at you in the future. This council cannot continue to be hoodwinked and driven by one person. There are more pressing matters to attend to. Will this council therefore take a named vote on the sanctions outlined within the decision minutes, number 4A through to 4D with the exception of 4C, and ensure that they remain in place at least until the next elections in May 2023? Thank you, Thank Mr you. Mayor. Number two. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, councillors, <clears throat> I recently asked this council unanimously in <coughs> sanctions of the Standards Committee <clears throat> in part to send a clear message that as councillors you undertake to work to the highest standards of public life in order to serve the communities you represent. The decision document <coughs> revealed the issues that led to the original complaint and that Councillor Lawson was responsible for a tsunami of accusations via social media and email which undermined the lives and professional careers of 16 of your colleagues and one member of staff. The document reveals the language and tactics he used to pursue this course of destruction and consequently the undermining of this Council's work and reputation solely in pursuit of his personal objectives. Two years on, he is clearly not ashamed, as witnessed by his responses <coughs> in this report <coughs> and recent press interview. He continues to behave in a manner that remains belligerently unrepented, unrepentant. Recent social media postings continue to attack former councillors, and when it was said that these comments should be reported to the monitoring officer, his response was, Oh, I'm shaking in my shoes. This attitude reflects behaviour detailed in this decision i.e. his refusal to follow proper channels of complaint that would have required actual evidence of wrongdoing rather than his own oft-repeated private opinion. Anyone who does not accept his opinion as valid becomes an object of ridicule. He extends this to the residents of this town when he refers to them as oxygen suckers if they disagree with him and made homophobic and anti-Semitic comments which were so bad they were reported to the police. Despite being asked by the then Mayor and Clark to discuss his concerns, he repeatedly failed to engage with a process that could have resolved these matters in a quiet, professional manner. This document contains only a small number of examples of his behaviour, but even these are being denied by him when he referred the matter to the Local Government Ombudsman. I would ask you to reflect on the fact that referring the decision on a matter of process is yet another form of denial of the behaviour that occurred which is ongoing and for which he is taking absolutely no responsibility. As individuals and councillors, are you willing to be party to and condone this behaviour? Mud, it does indeed stick. 
because the depth, breadth and repeated wrongful behaviour Councillor Lawson and his own fitness to be a community leader is now well evidenced. Not to apply the recommended sanctions or abstain would send a clear and powerful message to this community that as a council you are condoning behaviour which is and continues to this day to be bullying and destructive to the life of this community and individuals within it. Councillor Lawson, I called for your resignation, I still do, but only in hope because you clearly do not recognise the depth of hurt and distress your behaviour caused 16 individuals who were Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, and thank you for listening. Number three. Sorry, this one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Market Councillors, and members of the public. The decision document published regarding Councillor Lawson's behaviour clearly states that, and I quote, Facebook posts and emails gathered during the investigation evidenced multiple and serious breaches of the Town Council's Code of Conduct by Councillor Lawson, which was most starkly demonstrated by Councillor Lawson's conduct towards and about the former clerk, which represents a clear pattern of aggressive, intimidating behaviour that amounted to deliberate and persistent attempts to undermine and humiliate her." End of quote. The independent investigator, and indeed the panel, despite his denials, found that Councillor Lawson failed to value colleagues and staff, and failed to engage in an appropriate manner, and that, again I quote, officers of the council are not just a fair game because they work for the council. End of quote. Therefore, in view of the contents of this decision document, I call upon this meeting of Down and Market Town Council to unreservedly and publicly apologise to the former clerk. Lastly, it is, my, it is in my opinion that if you do not apologise, you will be seen to have been a party to this appalling behaviour. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Any other speakers? Any other speakers want to come forward? Thank you, councillors, members of the public. I'm Councillor Josie Ratcliffe. I represent East Down and Ward on the Borough Council. I'd like to speak from the Borough Council point of view. Um, at the recent uh, Down and Market Full Council meeting, I was impressed with how the meeting went. Um, you came organised, um, prepared, sorry, um, with debate. You, some of you brought proposals along and you discussed them, had a sensible debate, had, had votes and made decisions. You made good decisions such as supporting the menopause um, support group with premises, potential use of premises, also the, the childhood uh, sexual abuse group as well, supporters. So um, I can see it, it, there are good things that could, this council could be working on. And for a long time, it's been prevented from um, working together on things for the good of the town. Uh, the Borough Council has recently been investing more in Down and Market. So the Howdale uh, uh, playing field had a um, lot of £100,000 this year invested in the play equipment. Swan Youth Project continues to be supported by the Borough Council. Um, and recently they uh, long last agreed um, substantial investment in the toilets in, in the marketplace and the, in the car park uh, to bring them up to standard. So, but also the Borough Council invested in the standards committee process. This has taken resources of the Borough Council. Um, they've taken the process seriously and they, um, members of that council will be watching this meeting this evening <coughs> to see how the Down and Market Town Council responds to those recommendations from the Borough Council. Um, we would like to have a good working relationship, uh, but we need to see that um, 
you're taking your responsibilities as representatives of the community um, seriously and accordingly. Um, so I very much hope that you will consider your position as, as representatives of the community and um, show the borough council that this, uh, this council can move forward and, and achieve things for the town. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one written, um, which was just um, advising the council that the members of the public cannot always hear when they're over at the town hall, so we just need to be mindful of that, that you need to use the microphones in front of you. Um, Any other speaker? No, that was it. That was, I was going to say that. Oh, sorry. You brought it in on paper, so I thought you wanted read out. Sorry, Mike. Any other speakers? Good evening everybody. As a member of the public and a member of Down Market Town, we deserve better. I have been appalled by the things I have read and heard <coughs> as said. Now this council has been in turmoil for a few years. Councillors have resigned, you've got a chance to rebuild, and I do like what they've seen. But it is your duty tonight to carry out the sanctions what the Borough Council have been put forward. We we need it. You cannot you have at the last town council meeting, you decided as a council to put forward to the Sandwich Board an investigation into a council. So you must believe in the Sandwich Board. You all voted for it, even Doug Lawson voted for it. So for him to say that he doesn't believe in the standards board is rubbish because you that's the only option you have when someone misbehaves in council or brings in the district group, is to go to the borough council standard board. They have met, they have said, and they have told you of their findings. Now it is up to you and as a town, I'm looking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Nobody else wish to speak? Okay. On then. <coughs> Item 4. To approve the minutes of the full council meeting held on the 15th of November. And I have a proposal for that. Right. A seconder? All in favour? That's all in favour, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Item 5. Right. Is there anybody who wish to speak on this before I put the proposal forward? Any funded council? Yeah? Would you like to go up there and speak? Yeah, thank you. In considering the recommendations of the Borough Council Standards Hearings, I must first make myself aware of the relevant law, which is the 2011 Localism Act, and comment from the courts. Livingston versus the Adjudication Panel of England is a landmark case where it is put beyond doubt that the distinction between the man and the officer holder. The court's code of conduct applies only to the office holder when acting in capacity, not to the man who is acting in a private capacity. Addressing the comments made on social media. <laughs> Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Thank you. Carry on. Thank you. Carry on, Speaker. Did we laugh at any of yours? Mm. Speaker. Yeah. Addressing the comments made on social media. The subject member was using a Facebook page as a private individual. Therefore, the subject member was acting in private capacity. I make no further comment to the content 
that is not germane to the Code of Conduct. As to the regard of emails, it does appear that the Code of Conduct would be engaged. The courts have again put it beyond doubt in Regina <coughs> versus Central Television, PLC, where the House of Lords confirmed in the 1994 ruling of Lord Hoffman that so long as it is legal, freedom of speech holds the trump card. In addition, there is a higher threshold for political expression. However, it does not negate the need to void a breach of code of conduct. I do note that none of the com uh, complaints include the former legal officer to whom the comments were made, relate, nor to the best of my knowledge from someone who identifies as a member of the LGBTQ community. <laughs> I further note that there is no mention about refusing ethics and standards training which could have been offered by the Town Council. To her credit, the Acting Council's legal officer has addressed this matter for all councillors. As without it, it's a bit like complaining about your puppy messing on your best carpet without training it properly. Therefore, I do encourage the subject member to do his utmost to join myself and other councillors on training recommended by the Borough Council Standard Hearing. The subject member from his role of, as Deputy Mayor, while I did not support the subject member's initial appointment, nor condone the language used on social media, I will add his actions on all committees while on this council, the subject member, from my experiences, has been in a di seen in a different light. I must reject the recommendation to remove the subject member as mayor, which is covered in section 4C, so I won't go on any with that. But we must always remember and be aware that the law is always the higher authority. Moving a motion of censure against a subject member was always within the gift of all and any of the complainants, but it seems for whatever reasons they all rejected this op option. It puzzles me because we are now recommended to censure the subject member. In coming to a view, I need to consider the benefit or otherwise such action to local people and the council. However, I am saying, I will not do someone else's dirty work. I will not be, followed, be a following sheep either, or condone the language used, and refuse to break the law. I stand here tonight, as always, my own person. What causes me the most concern is removing the subject member from all committees it seems bizarre that the complainants who should support appointing the subject member to committees, yet the standards hearing now recommend removal. This is especially the case as in May 2021 the Town Council reappointed the subject member to committees. These are the points and principles I should take into consideration when I vote. Thank you for your time. Any other councillors to speak? Good evening all. I have not had the opportunity to defend myself on my actions to date because my testimony was dis disallowed and the normal British way is to permit the accused to speak on his own behalf. Here is what I have to say. I have the right to face my accusers. No one can stop me telling the truth, now or in the future. A borough councillor has informed me already that there is already the intention of GMTC councillors to find me guilty without regard to the accuracy of the accusations or the legitimacy of the process. What is not evident is what is the pressure being applied on DMTC 
to do something when Borough Council Kingsley and West Norfolk does nothing to follow up on its own internal code of conduct cases. DMTC has no specific legal obligation to do anything with the recommendations and can ignore the recommendations in the same way that Borough Council Kingsley and West Norfolk has ignored standards committee recommendations itself. <coughs> Woeful has been a, a word used a lot, bandied around. So let's use it a lot. It is woeful that Borough Council, Kingsley West Norfolk, took on the responsibility of this code of conduct travesty when DMTC was, in fact, the only legal entity with the proper lawful authority, according to the Localism Act 2011. It is woeful that the investigator appointed by Borough Council, Kingsley West Norfolk, a former police officer, ignored the normal advice and elected on his own account to apply the personal, highly subjective views and opinions of the evidence in front of him, much of which was provided by people who alleged who allegedly had been former police officers themselves, despite written evidence to the contrary. <coughs> it's woeful that the Standards Committee panel selected uh, of its own choice to go against the advice of the monitoring officer and accept social media material as acceptable evidence. It is woeful that the Standards Committee panel decided to print dishonest remarks in its findings, thus proving it had never read anything apart from the complainant's side. It is woeful that the monitoring officer instructed the Standards Committee panel to ignore the DMTC governance issues and seen with the main part of the background and key to the whole of the Code of Conduct inquiry, and accused evidence and testimony. It is not clear why the monitoring officer issued this instruction, but her employer is Borough Council Kings of West Norfolk. It is woeful that the Standards Committee panel believed that, that all the fabricated evidence against the accused. It is woeful that former Councillor Hayes would stoop so low as to lie so much and put defamatory statements into print. Um, but it actually didn't afford the legal cost of penalty so be it written evidence, thank you very much, love it for defamation. <laughs> it is woeful that the Standards Committee panel published the boundary statements, and this will add to the costs incurred already by Borough. It is woeful that the Standards Committee panel conducted itself like a kangaroo court. Quiet, please. <coughs> it is woeful that the DMTC used to have so many councillors who were prepared to act in a manner that could result in prosecution, councillors willing to commit perjury to try to shut down local businesses, all deliberately and knowingly and so many councillors who are comfortable lying to members, lying to the media, and lying to the public. No it is, no. would be woeful for DMTC to agree to support the, the defamation published in the Standards Committee panel and former Hayes, whilst DMTC has a defamation case to handle as a result of another former Lady Mayor's unjustifiable outburst on the DMTC website. The Standards Committee <coughs> panel decision, it's notice it's, it's of itself defamatory, and I should be referred to your lawyer to act, take action against the perpetrators as they do not enjoy any legal protection in relation to defamatory statements. <coughs> this information would not have a knock on impact on DMTC. There is a complaint lodged against Borough Council Kingsley and West Norfolk for mishandling of this code of conduct process. <coughs> Once Borough Council Kingsley and West Norfolk responds to the complaint, it will be possible to escalate the local ombudsman. I'm going to leave it there because just. Quiet, please. <coughs> Any other councillor wish to speak? Okay. And then we'll go to our first proposal. Further to the Borough Council of Kingsland and West Norfolk Standards Committee's hearing decision notice dated the 3rd of November 2022. I propose the removal of Councillor Lawson from all committees and subcommittees to which he is appointed. Councillor Lawson is censored by the Down and Market Town Council. Councillor Lawson undergoes ethics and standards training. When considering these proposals, I would like you to consider each item independent of, of the other. So a vote is made in favour, against or sustained. For one, number two and number three. I believe that Councillor Inkavaya will second this proposal. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. Prior to the meeting, I have been approached to ask that any vote regarding council laws is made by a ballot. The acting town clerk will give you a voting slip so that you can make your ballot. And I, I ask that once you have voted, that you fold your vote and place it in a sealed container, which will be opened by the acting town clerk once any councillor who is able, has been and given an opportunity to vote. Okay, so that is the procedure. Okay, so you'll see on the side, there is a pen 
there is a sealed box with an opening obviously in it. Each of you are going to be given a vote card. Once you've made your vote, fold it up so that nobody can read it. Pop it in the box, please. Once you've all done it, then I will bring the votes out here, unseal the box, and then I'll count them, and then I'll give the decision. So, Councillor Buxton first. Thank you. 
by Dan and Market Town Council. The Council are in favour of Councillor Lawson undergoing ethics and standards training. Thank you.
So from my point of view, Council, I just need the permission to spend the uh, budget on the ethics training for the whole of Council, which I believe is what has been discussed anyway with myself. Um, so assuming that you're happy with that, are you in favour of proposing the £600 budget? Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Corbett, Councillor Lane, yeah. Is everybody in favour? All in favour? Brilliant, thank you. Okay, that will take place as soon as possible. And you've got your second vote. Right, I've now got a second proposal. This vote will be a show by a show of hands. I propose that Down and Market Town Council amend the Code of Conduct to remove references to it, establishing a Standards Committee to hear it breach of code of the code as this is incorrect in law. I believe this proposal has been seconded by Councillor Incavire. Correct. Right. All in favour? Yeah. Against Your hand never moved. I can't see the Were you in favour or against? No, no, no. Changing the code of conduct. You're in favour. Yeah. So it's just council Lawson that's against it. Is anybody abstaining? No, that's fine. Okay, so that's, that's counted. Thank you very much. I now close the meeting. Thank you. 19 to 6. 19 to 6. Can we just put that sign down, please? <laughs> 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 <laughs>